Specifically, what information did the other officers tell you that Travis was doing to hinder police? None. There was no communication. No, after the fact. You said that they told you, you met with the other officers, you talked to them, and based on your conversations, you thought that the there was enough evidence and an appropriate charge was hindering police. Mr. What Bracken, information did they give you? Even though I charged him, they never told me his business there. It was not until we started writing use of force statements that Monty Duggar, Agent Duggar, said, I was trying to give him jewelry. And the first thing we all said is, what were you thinking? Who gives jewelry on the scene? We got on his case as soon as he mentioned that to us. But that was until we were inside the office preparing for riots. So your testimony was, you had to come meet with me, you were forced to apologize, and then you were charged. Well, you didn't give me a choice, Mr. Brackett. You okay, literally not, told me. You got to object. Let him answer. <clears throat> okay, fine. Go ahead. You didn't give me a choice, Mr. Brackett. What you said to me in front of my wife was that I don't want you to apologize to Travis Price in this room. I want you to apologize to him at 3 p.m. Think about your brothers and sisters. Think about the riots. Think about what people are going to say when they see this video, Officer Marino. Think about them. When you come, be sincere. Look at Travis. Tell Travis how sorry you are. Mr. Brackey, you said that in front of my wife. Okay. You made me seem like I was all at fault. But here, you come in and blame the feds. So whose fault is it? I'll ask the questions here, Mr. Brady. Okay. Now, had you actually taken the time to do the five or ten minutes worth of video watching that's on here, you would have realized within an hour of arriving at the police department that Travis Price was wrongfully charged. Mr. Brackett, that day was completely different. That wasn't a normal day. So everything was happening at a high speed. Unfortunately, I know what you're trying to explain, but the day of the incident, there's a lot of moving parts to this. Let's just cut to the chase, Officer Moreno, Mr. Moreno. You knew at some point that day, you knew Travis Price had done nothing to hinder the police, and you didn't do anything to get him out of jail. I really don't know what I could have done. I just wrote a ticket, you, and nobody told me not to write the ticket or release him. You didn't know what you could do? Your Honor, uh, <clears throat> please let him answer the question. I thought he was finished. Go ahead, Mr. Brack. You said you didn't know what you could do. Is that your answer? I, I didn't know what else to do. What, did you want me to go to the jail and do what? Could you have called your boss? Your I did. I spoke to Sergeant Watson. And told him, we have the wrong guy in jail. We need to get Travis out. This is not right. Mr. Brackett, I had a citation written. I looked at Sergeant Watson, and I said, he's being charged with hindering police. Sergeant Watson said, that's the appropriate charge. Go leave it in the jail. We have other stuff to do. I drop off the ticket, because we got to leave defense a copy, and I immediately have to attend to my next task. 